I'd say to anyone out there, like if you want to make a difference and you want to do something unique, you have to broaden your um, your ideas and your views by listening to to as much music as you can, you know, and don't be just isolated by listening to one thing or one sound or one, you know, because that that's not gonna that's that's not gonna trigger you to 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 truly make a difference. You know, if you want to be triggered to make a difference, you have to open up to to all kinds of, uh, you know, music and ideas. He's an extremely humble person. Sometimes I even feel like he could be more proud of what he does, but uh, it's in his nature. So yeah, he's down to earth and we're from the Netherlands and I think everyone that's from the Netherlands is extremely down to earth because that's how we get raised and how everyone is and it's our culture. So yes, I, he's definitely a down to earth person. I got a, a really great amount of support from a phenomenal talented DJ uh, out of the UK called DJ Sasha. He discovered a record of mine um, around 2000 and you know so so being supported by him and being trained by him and being uh, you know taught by him how it is to be a traveling DJ how it is to deal with you know the the, the pitfalls and the, the 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 ups and downs that come with a career like that has been of tremendous uh, help and and of undeniable um, value you know and and there's not a day that doesn't go by when I think about my career and I don't, you know, feel humbled by the fact that he recognized my talent, um, you know, and, and nourished it and helped me find my path, and find my way. And uh, I will never forget this. Sasha has been instrumental to my, uh, to my, to my career. My core values and the stuff that I really enjoyed, fat bass lines, quirky vocals, you know, sort of like a funky, sort of like approach, not too serious, you know, that whole thing just fits so well uh, in this day and age. And so therefore, you know, with a, with a slight adjustment, you know, obviously you will use some of the tools that are around, you know, you are going to use the soft synth that, that everybody else is using, you know, that makes that sound. And, and, and I think in that sense, uh, you know, it's really like almost like a 2.0, it's like, it's, like, it's like a new wave in my career. I, I, you know, I signed a nice deal with Spinner Records, it's like, it's like, I don't know, it's like it just feels very much uh, in control again. And um, it was challenging for a little while. You know, I realized I lost some momentum and, you know, people were forgetting my name. And obviously young kids were like, I mean, you know, Santa Clown. I was like, oh, yeah, that's the guy that my brother used to listen to back in 2004. You know, times move quickly. These clubs, you know, they go, you know, people get married. They, they move on. They have kids. You know, they're going to go to clubs for the rest of their lives. So you need to stay relevant in a club and stay relevant for a, for a generation. It's like what we do now in, in electronic music. We layer, like, you know, a lot of that. Trying to find that sweet spot, you know, like, like layering sounds and then all that together creates like that sort of like magic. And you never really know why, you know, it's just, just all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, you know? It could be that one little, tiny little added element to something that just all of a sudden creates that sort of unique combination of flavors and vibes and, and all of a sudden it's like oh wow yeah now this this is this is what I'm searching for but it could be like the last five percent of a whole stack of layers that sort of completes the layers you know it's funny I, for the whole you know for the if you if you look at the the, the chorus you can see me stacking those um, those layers of the bass line. It's kind of, you know, every time I listen to classical music, it's like, that's what these composers did as well. They looked for that unique sort of balance of, of, of all these layers and all these, you know, instruments that, that they had to their disposal. You know, it's, it's, it, nothing's changed, you know, in that sense. You know, it's still the same thing. 
I think Fader Pro is a very exciting project for Sander. He's very excited about it because his whole family has been in education, so it comes very natural to him to teach and to share his experience. He has over 25 years of experience in this scene, so it's awesome that he can do it this way, and he's super excited about the project. So I just uh, shot my first course um, in Denver last week, um, and it was, in, you know, it was really great. At first, I was quite sort of. Um, I was a little intimidated by the idea of kind of opening up because in that world and in that spot when, when, when you're alone and you're, you're trying to create something, there's a lot of vulnerability, you know. It's not like I'm completely convinced that, you know, what I do is super either A, super important or B, you know, better than any other out there. You know, I, I completely feel like I'm just lucky, uh, you know, I, I, I stumble across like ideas and, and, and things often by mistake and by fluke and you know something goes wrong in the studio and it's like oh actually that's a really nice little mistake and then that ends up becoming you know the the, the moment of the record so it's so you know opening up in that in that in that in that environment is you know it's a little intimidating it was it wasn't the easiest thing I've done um, and you know it's almost like if you're in that position, it's almost like an obligation to share that type of wealth, I guess, you know, and, and share those ideas and hopefully inspire. I mean, in the end of the day, you can have all the hit records in the world and you can DJ on the moon or, or make millions of dollars. The, the utmost form of respect and flattery would be if you can inspire other people to do what I do, you know. And um, so this is, you know, na a natural consequence of that. Um, stance and that, that way of looking at things. So the guys of Fader Pro um, aggressively hijacked me and put me in a basement. And you know, some people say, why don't you, you know, go to the police? But I don't know. I, I think they're genuinely nice guys. You know, 